Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Masterworks. I'm Jason Meyer of Meyer Studio. And tonight we are in for a treat. So, Shakti, hello, blessed evening. Oh, that's an appropriate statement. That's an appropriate statement for tonight. Um, we're going to look at um, somebody who's new to me. I ran across not too long ago. And uh, his name's Dwight William Tryon. And I've got a few things loaded up, but um, we'll see how it goes. We may really slow down and spend our time on this one if it works out. Okay, how is everybody? Are you guys ready to go? Ready to look at some art? Well, if you've been around too long, you know how um, into ceremony and small talk I am. So, with that established, why don't we just share my screen with you? And we will. There we go. Shakti's ready. We're ready. All right. So here we go. Like I said, this is Dwight William Tryon, I'm guessing is how you say his name. He was an American landscape painter, part of the Tonalist School, or known as a Tonalist. It, you know, when they say part of a school or whatever, I always take that with a, with a grain of salt. Some are, some aren't. But anyway, let's take just a minute and gaze upon this and let's see what you see. I'm going to take a minute because I find... Um, I'm finding on my second monitor over here ah that will be a better experience for everybody I think okay so what are some things that you notice in here Right, well this is this is quiet, right? Very quiet. And where are the areas that we look? Well we start right up here. We've got some darks that mark the path, some lights, and look, there's some bright color. Does this color extend all the way to the edge of the can? No, it dies off over here, doesn't it? You see that? You see how it's more right here? And then we even have a little bit and boom. And then we die off a bit here. So along this here, I would say this is more. And then the edges I would call less. Right? And the point being is we look where there's more. And then he doesn't drag us through this next section, does he? You see this section? I would call most of that less. It lets, lets you go. But then after that, what he grabs you again. Grabs you. Grabs you. Gra and of course, we're going to be right here, right? But this even pulls a little bit over here. But... And then how else is he grab? Well, is this part of the grab? I would say so. Where does the grab continue? This negative shape, maybe? We got something sticking out and happening here. And then we've got darks up here. A wet, along with the lightest light and the most color. So again, let me take my cursor away. 
and see if you can see that now. Up front on the path and the sparks of green and everything. And then as we let go, it's almost like an inhale and then a, an exhale and then an inhale with a grab. And then an exhale and some grab. Okay, so we've seen how we're moving through this canvas. Now let's ask ourselves, what makes this more of a peaceful painting rather than like a rock and roll dynamite painting? What do you think some of those factors are? Let me get back to your comments here. I lost my comments. There we go, we got comments now. Back to full screen, okay. Well, let's consider, and again, I don't wanna point it out with the mouse right away. I'd prefer you to look for it. So this area up front where we focus on the path and the green grass, then we're shot a little bit diagonally, aren't we, to the dark of the other side of the path there, which leads us back to the woman and child. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I see the assumptions flying. I see the assumptions flying. How do we know that's a woman and child? I mean, come on. Do we really know that's a mother and a child? How? The point being is how much does it take to make your point? Did anybody not see a mother and child? Well, of course it's a mother and child. There's a basket. She's obviously wearing a bonnet or something on her head. And look at the size of that little fella. About half her size and height and width. Yeah, and look at the way he's walking along. How is he walking along? And look at her just, how is she bent? In other words, we all have very active imaginations. So with context and kind of where they expect things, it's amazing how little you actually need to put in there. All right, I'm amazed by this stuff. I don't know if you are. So, but let, let's keep with our imagination. So we start up front, right on the path and the, the grass a little bit to the side, then we're shot kind of to the other side of the path to the dark as it turns which leads us back to the mother and child, right? Which there's the mist on the ground, the fog on the ground at the base of the trees, which is basically a light surrounded by darks. The mother and child on the bottom, boom, but then the trees on each side and then the trees on top. So that's kind of a big note, but then those dark trees all around it make for a pause or like a rest in the music. And then when you look at that back bank of trees, just let your eye scan that whole back bank of trees back and forth from side to side several times. Right, study that entire back bank of trees. And each time you go by, 
Where does your eye pause? Yeah, and then of course we've got the tall tree with the light in the sky and the color on the clouds leading into the dark silhouettes of the upper part of the closer trees. So that movement that he's taken us on, it's not really side to side. It's more centered and quiet. Right? It's not real jerky from top to bottom. So that the m movement's a little quieter. Right? The colors are a little quieter. The action, the most, is not as much. What do you mean the most is not as much? Well, can you, <clears throat> can you imagine... Um, a young girl playing guitar, you know, maybe stops and just sings a song a cappella. And the most she gives, the most of that concert, how is that going to compare to the most of like an Aerosmith stadium show? Right? It matters. So this most here is a little closer to an a cappella, right, than a stadium song. In movement, in shape, in color. And for that reason, it's a little bit quieter. Okay, so do you guys see where I'm saying? So we're up here. And we're pausing a little bit because we've got this, and then there's a dark, there's some color, there's the other light. We'll call this kind of our warm, but it's a real neutral warm. And then we've got yellow greens and blue greens, you know, bright greens, all kinds of greens. And so this gives us a little pause, which tells us, like, reads as detail, right? Along with, look, one, two, three, a little activity here. Then we're let go till we go over here. Boom. This assures that we don't go too far out. No, we've got to be directed back over here. Once we're directed here, there's no choice. Right? This wins over this every time. And then once we're here, where are we going to go? Well, now this is the most. Right? And where's the most from here? Right? And then there's just enough not to get us stuck here like in an infinite loop. Can you see that? So, again, let's, let's sneak up on this just a little bit. Consider this back bank of trees. And I want us to carefully consider... that upper contour here and then look we give just a little bit and then boom a sharp note up a sharp note down a sharp note up some good color well yeah that's a lot more than any of this and then there's a little rest and then look a jig down up a duh Oh, to the highest, it's relatively dark. And then what's the rest that's happening over here on the top? Can you? See? I hope you can clearly see that. Because this is such a... Um, it's so poetic and it's so simple. And sometimes it's easier to pick up on the simplicity here, right? If we slow down just a bit. All right, so let's shake things up just a bit. Maybe. Okay. 
Does everything still hold true? All right, yep. Everything stands on the shoulder. Color stands on the shoulders of value. Color stands on the shoulders of value. Now, when you look at that back bank of trees, where do you look? <laughs> the same place you looked before. All right? When you look at that first bank of trees across there, where do you stop? At the mother and child. When you look in front of the mother and child, between the bottom of the canvas and the mother, where are you going to look? Well, from that far path in the dark up to this near, near path and around the edges of the path. Right? And in black and white, look at that near path. Look at the activity, the coming and going there. And then, in other words, let me help you out here. So look at this section and it has a most and it's on the front part of the picture plane. So we're going to say this is near, very close foreground. And in the foreground, this is where we focus. So even though this is all foreground here, this is aesthetic background and this is aesthetic background. And this is aesthetic foreground, meaning this is where you're going to look. And as we move back one layer in space, where are we looking? Where we're, we're looking actually, oh, oh, isn't that interesting? Does anybody see that? Does anybody see? What is that? What does that remind you of anything? Just a dark shape, an interesting dark shape. Look, it catches you and throws you this way. But look, it lets go. It lets go. It lets go. And now we're just flying through the air like a ball before, boom, of course, we're going to be caught right here. So can you look at this whole thing here as a singular dark shape? Right? And maybe not a shape, but a movement. And look, it doesn't really start or stop there, but it's continued. You see how all of this is part of that movement. Very important, because if you don't have a way to move the viewer through the painting, you know, what? what is there? And then after that, look, again, there's some weight here. And a little bit of weight here, but then there's just kind of this whole scene up here, isn't there? And notice the size of the. Well, of course, that's the size of that, Jason. I mean, they're they're people. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, you don't understand. We're free to make these as big or small as we want and these people as big or small as we want. But I'm saying look at the design and what it does aesthetically to have something small like this playing against something larger like this. Right? We could call this smaller and sharper and this would be larger and more dispersed. Can you see what I'm saying there? Let's shake things up even some more. What do you see when we do that? Well, don't we still look in all those same places? Right up here, isn't this still where we are? And then we're thrown over here, and doesn't this still work as a single piece? And then we're caught up here, and then this kind of whole area works as a note itself, doesn't it? I mean, in my eyes, it does. 
And how important is this little gray breaking up this big vast space? Did you realize that's a gray shape, a dark gray shape on top of a light gray, light gray shape? And tell me exactly about those edges of that shape. And how the edges of that shape compare to the edges of this shape compare to the edges of these shapes or even down here. So I know Susan's been talking about for a long time about fur and hair and drawing them well. It has a lot to do with edges and it, it's hard to see until you see. But if you start paying attention to what an edge does to the character of the object, to how flat that paint's laid down, would these still look as good if these were completely solid, flat pieces of paint? How somehow is there seem to be, it seems like a bird could still fly through there. Yet, it's a solid shape. What does it take to accomplish that? Okay. So somehow I've managed to go on 20 minutes about this painting. You guys will have to let me know if you like looking at these longer and deeper. You know, I. I certainly do. That's where I get the most out of them. For instance, oh, you thought I was done. Oh, there's some more. And then how? Oh. You see how there's, compare this to this. So there's a certain weight here, and that weight is much more than any weight that's happening over there. When I say weight, I mean visual weight. It's going to catch your eye, like a certain note or something would catch your ear, right? Especially all in here, if you just looked at this, well, of course, look at that light, dark, boom, boom, interesting shape. This is where you're going to go. It's the same thing that's happening up here. Again, I hope you guys don't think I'm droning on about this, but it's just done so beautifully. And it looks so simple. And like anybody and their grandmother and their granddaughter and their dog and probably two of their cats could do that. But I promise you it's so much more. It's so much more. I really like taking a lot of time with each one. Oh, good. Good, good, good. I appreciate that. It's because again, this is for you guys too. And if you don't like it, let me know. Again, it's okay to have different opinions. But let's take just a minute with this before we say goodbye. Then very quickly, we'll look at another study. Um, I don't know. Is that going to ruin the vibe? Did we establish a vibe here we got to hold on to? Let's see. So Cindy says it helps with the time you're taking to really study, learn, understand, and learn. All right. Well, we'll keep kind of rolling this way till we hear differently. And you know, knowing that stuff doesn't take the pleasure from the painting. But uh, I mean, that's probably why I'm an artist, why I'm a painter. Is I could literally sit here for the next three hours with this and keep discovering, crawling in and out of those things and over the paint and through the scene and just enjoying the smell of the air and that sunset. Right? And for you painters out there, notice how that first bank of trees separate from that second bank of trees. They're separate, but nothing like the separation between the back bank and the sky. 
And by the way, did you look at the horizon of the sky over the trees? Man, where did that color come from? And I'm not talking here. Oops. I'm not talking here. What is all this? What is all this? What is all this? Right? These are gross, gross colors that can help these colors just shine like a million bucks. Oh, Susan, we're glad you made it. Well, thanks for jumping on here. Jumping on. So we spent, we spent a good amount of time on this one, actually, this whole time. And so, yeah, go back. I think it's worth it. So, so, so gorgeous. So before we say goodbye, and this isn't going to, I don't think, mess up our vibe too much because it's, uh, it's no slouch either. Here's another one, a little study. And maybe on this one, there's no need for me to point anything out. But we can just look with our eyes. You know, where do your eyes go? What do they see? <laughs> now I can hear you oh I see the reflection on the sand and the birds on the beach and it looks like there's some wood or something maybe a little shipwreck or rocks on the beach and then there's waves and all the seagulls and look do you see the sailboats on the horizon oh and then the beautiful clouds in the sky Is that really what you see? Come on, is that really what you see? I hate to do this, but I can't help it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Come on, guys. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Or do you really see a light, dark gray pattern? And the lightest light with the darkest dark is going to hold a certain weight. And as we move back, those lights and darks can come closer together. And yet as they come closer together, we can still have most, like, like right across this area, most. And then we'll let go a little bit. I mean, there's waves here, but notice these waves just blend in as far as the value goes. Then our next most is right here. And then our final most is, but it's not singular note, right? You can see that. Look at all these little notes supporting this and everything supporting it. Oh, good. I'm glad. I, I felt we had a really good thing going there on the last one, but you know, I really do apologize if I'm feeding you guys with a fire hose, but there's just too much beauty out there. <laughs> we got more to see. We got more to see. All right, let's flip this over. Let's flip this over. And again, let's just take a minute in black and white and let's take a minute in color. And we'll call it an evening. But, um, man, you know, even as I start these shows and I'm a little bit tired from the day, or perhaps a lot tired, I just look at these and I'm like a giggly little kid. I mean, it's... This is what somebody did with mud. This is what one of our playmates did with mud. Wow! Wow. That's like a triple wow. 
So again, light dark patterns can sound very, very dry. But you can learn to use and produce light dark patterns that are literally just simply sublime. Right? I mean, just take, I, I don't know about you, but I mean, this painting almost takes me into like ecstasy or something. It's crazy. And you can see it's just a little bitty study. My guess is this is probably an 8 by 10 or maybe smaller. Yet I can hear the birds. I can smell the water. I can feel the wind. I can feel the sand in my toes. Can you really, Jason? Yeah, I can. I know. It's just a light, dark pattern. But wow. Wow. Right? So, you know, thank God he let us participate. That he didn't take 72 hours and spell out every detail. And since he didn't, and since he's not like handing it to us thread by thread, we get to live inside this painting. And as much as be in it, our imagination creates it. So, you know, there's, there's poetry. It's not about just facsimile or paint or copying. It's not about that at all. But it's really about the poetry of mark making. So why don't we all sleep on that thought tonight? The poetry of mark making. And wake up in the morning and um, we'll look at some of your poetry. We're going to look at uh, Sue and Wendy and Tom and Janny tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Cindy, thank God, will be in the studio tomorrow afternoon for studio time. And... We'll got Sketch Club before we'll do another Masterworks. All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, if you got half the pleasure out of just looking at these as I get, I think it's a good way to spend the evening. All right. All right. Love you guys. Good night.